Praise the good Lord Jesus. How you doing? My name is Sean McVeigh with Sean's Outdoor Adventures. And in this video, I'm gonna give you five tips for hunting turkey on public land. So tip number one, let's get right into it. This is actually a tip that is good for anywhere, but it's a very important one and not everybody utilizes it. So I'm gonna give it to you right now. And that is to try to roost a bird the night before. Now that's really important and helpful because it lets you know where the bird's gonna be in the morning and you can try to get in there in the dark and get set up. I try to not use my flashlight or let them know it's me coming in the dark. So, you know, you have to know the lay of the land as well. So we're talking about, especially public land, make sure you walk that public land and get used to it during the daylight, different times of the year. And I'll also say on this, roosting a bird the night before, um, I sometimes use a locator call a little bit, but I typically just listen. I'll give you an example. Uh, a couple years ago, I was on public land on a dirt road, and I just took a walk down the dirt road right at dusk. And once in a while, I let out a few clucks, and real sharp and loud just to see if I'd get a response, and nothing. I was walking back to my vehicle, and it was almost dark, and I heard one gobble, a few hundred yards away down a ridge from right where I was at that moment. And the reason why I want to point that out is even if you're using locator calls, they're not always going to respond. Sometimes they just, they do their thing and they'll gobble one or two times as they're going. I mean, some birds are real vocal and they'll gobble a lot. But my point is just go out and listen, you know, walk in the dirt roads. If that's, you know, public land with dirt roads near you, it's, it's a nice relaxing thing. You can cover a little land and just listen that last half hour of daylight and hopefully locate a bird that way. All right, here's number two. This is really applicable to public land. What I'm going to say. So let's say you, you located that bird the night before you set up in the morning. And I did that on a, a different year. I set up on a bird. The bird was here. I set up here and then right, you know, coming off the roost, I wanted to wait till he was on the ground before I did much calling. He got to the ground, I started calling, and what a lot of people do on public land is they just get out of their truck and listen and li try to hear where the bird's at and then they make a move on it, which is a tip as well. You can wait until daylight, you can wait till you hear the bird and then make a move on it. And that's what these guys did. So I was set up here, the bird was here, and there was a ridge. I'm in Pennsylvania, so there's lots of ridge mountains. There was a ridge running this way. And what happened is there was guys here listening and they heard the birds and they came in. I'm gonna draw right through my words here. They came in and set up right there on the bird. There was another group of guys that did the same exact thing who came in from this side. So I had two separate groups of hunters come in and cut me off between me and the bird. And that is gonna happen on public land. So my strategy was this. These guys cut me off here. I'm not done with this bird. What I did is I, I said, where is the bird gonna go when these hunters pressure it? So tip number three. Tip number three involves other people cutting you off Ask the question, where will that bird go? As I said before, I had a ridge mountain. The top of the ridge was up here, uh, just above where the birds were. A lot of times the birds, when they roost, they'll go up high on the ridge or even to the top of the ridge and fly straight out into a tree. And when they come down, sometimes they come down in a, you know, on the uphill side, but not always. You know, not, I mean, not always right to the top of the ridge. They can come down on angles and stuff but the birds were just below the top of the ridge. And I sat and waited for a little bit and I was listening to what was going on with these people. And I could tell the birds were not coming down the ridge and these guys weren't going up. They just, they set up camp right there. So I was like, you know what? The birds are not gonna come down the ridge. What they're gonna do is they're gonna work back and forth on this ridge. And I hit the nail on the head. What I did, being down here is I looped out a half mile away. I went real far out around, got up on the top of the ridge, and then I came across and I set up over here on the top of the ridge. And I thought, I've got a 50-50 chance that those birds are gonna come my way. And I could hear them gobbling over here, and wouldn't you know it, as soon as I set up, I heard one gobble half the distance of where they had been. Those turkeys were headed straight to me. I never let out a single call. The one drawback where I was is I was in a laurel thicket, so I could only see about 10 to 15 yards. 
and I was trying to get, it was one of my first spring gobbler hunts, I was trying to get on video on the go. So I had a GoPro on my hat and I didn't have it camouflaged real well. It was kind of that, that plastic housing and that really ended up hurting me in the end. What happened was the birds, they hadn't gobbled again for a while and then one of them was right there in the laurel thicket, maybe 15 yards away and I didn't even hear him. And um, as I, mo I maybe moved my head a little bit and it spooked them and they ran back this way and what ended up happening was when the birds were messing around back and forth here, this, this group of guys went over here on the side of the ridge. Those birds ended up going following the ridge down and the one guy ended up getting them. It's the same concept. He, he didn't even know I was there because I never even let out a call. He was just making a move on the birds and the birds ended up going this way and he got the shot. So my point to you, hunting public land, if you got other people involved on the hunt or other people cutting you off or whatever, ask that question, where will the bird go when they get a little pressure from these people? All right, tip number four, hunt them like deer. That might sound a little funny, but turkey are actually fairly habitual. I mean, in the springtime, they like certain areas. And even in the fall, I see turkeys in pockets of forests in the same locations year after year sometimes. It's because that's their preferred area for feeding that time of year or for mating or various things like that. So there's a lot of birds that are on public land that are call shy and they just are not very vocal. So if you know the area that they're gonna be in, you just go and set up there and you don't even call. So if you know every morning turkeys like to come to this pocket of the forest, just go and get set up. Don't call, nothing, just set up there and wait. And a lot of times they'll be on their own little pattern and they're gonna show up. It's not nearly as exciting hunting them that way, but when you're hunting public land, sometimes that is the only way you're gonna be successful. And here is tip number five. If things are not working out for you, if there's a lot of hunters out, what I would say is only use soft calls very, very seldom. So let out just a couple little clucks, like dup, 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 once every 40, 30 minutes. You know, just very soft calls, just to make it seem like there's a hen, you know, eating bugs or something by herself right there. Because what happens is a lot of times there's a lot of people out there with these real raspy calls and they're going really hardcore at it trying to get the birds excited. And the birds get turned off to it real quick on public land in a lot of the places I hunt. So you've got to flip it and do something that a lot of people are not doing. And that is just soft calls a little bit once in a while, maybe set up one hen decoy and just see if you can get that lonely gobbler coming in. Again, it's not going to be as exciting as some of those hunts where you're going real crazy with the calls and the birds are really hammering back at you with the gobbles. But this is public land hunting, folks, and it is a different chapter. You got to read the story a little differently, and sometimes you got to take some different methods in there to be successful. So those are five tips to hunting turkey on public land. I hope you liked it. Hope you subscribe if you're not already, and I hope you check out a lot of my other videos. Until next time, take care. And God bless.